Hello everyone, my name is Jeremy, and on this channel I talk about color and light. And today I want to talk about a subject of shadow color. I have heard a statement out there that says when you have warm light, like the sun, you have cool shadows. And when you have cool light, you have warm shadows. Many artists have come to me saying, I heard this as a rule. Is this a truth or is this a myth? This is what I would like to answer today. I have a previous video where I talked about color temperature, the concept that as light increases and decreases in intensity, that there is a shift not only of the value of that light source, as in the black and the white, the light and the dark, but also the hue and the saturation are tied into this. I theorize that as light loses its intensity, that the sh hue will shift around the color wheel and that the saturation will increase as the light falls off. And some of you have written me messages saying, but that seems to not make sense because, like look at this, this video here, I have light from the sun, it's a warm light source, and my shadows appear blue, they feel cold, they feel more gray in comparison to the sunlight. So what is true? Let's talk about this in more detail and see if we can discover whether this is a myth or a reality. Okay, so the question that we need to start with is, what is a shadow? There is light, there is shadow. Scientifically, if there is only one light source, there is where light hits and bounces, and then there's where light does not hit and does not bounce off of. When considering classic art, you have the terminator angle, and this is where the light hits an object, and as it reaches this point on my nose, on my lips, on my chin, on my neck, where the light starts wrapping around, the area where it stops shining is considered the terminator angle, the terminator edge. That is where the light stops lighting the surface. When I talk about color temperature, in my former video about color temperature, I promoted the idea that as light loses intensity, it will gain in saturation and it will shift its hue slightly. Looking at this with a white light source right here, this is where when the light wraps around my face, right near the terminator angle, you know, something that is facing directly towards the light, like this side of my cheek, but on the front of my nose, my forehead, as that light wraps around, there is a change in color intensity, so thus there is a change in color temperature. It's very subtle to see a little bit of warmth as the light wraps around from a white light source, but it is happening. If I change the color of this light source, come in here to color, make this slightly warm, you will see the exaggerated effect of color temperature with that one light source where the specular highlight of my cheek will be a lesser saturated yellow, but then as it wraps around my face and around my hands and, and the object, you will see this gain of yellow, orange, red, black. There is no increase in saturation in the shadow zone because there's no light over there. There is just the change as the light loses its intensity, as it loses its temperature. Over here, there's no temperature because there is no light. The confusion comes in when we have a secondary light source. The theory that is put out there of when there's warm light, there's cool shadows, actually comes from observing life and outdoor sunlight. Sunlight is warm and there's a secondary color. There's no color in the shadow from the sun. There is color in the shadow from the blue of the sky. So if I turn off the sun, all we have is this secondary light source. This light source also follows color temperature. So the highlights on my face, the brightest points, are less saturated and as the light wraps around the terminator angle from this soft light source, there will be a shift in hue as well. I guess the thing that makes it really difficult is when you have multiple light sources together. Let me desaturate this light slightly like this, the trans, let me move that here. Very subtle controls with this, this is pretty cool. The transition between the warm light and the cool light is where people have trouble. If the lights are very saturated, you will see that the colors will shift through the color wheel and follow the color wheel. So 
it'll go from yellow to orange to red into purples and then from purples into the blues and two cyans. You can have the whole rainbow as you follow around. If I desaturate these colors, you will then go through the gray zone. A lot of other artists talk about this, grays, power in the grays. This is, this is the point where my color temperature video and my color relativity video meet. And this is where two different colored light sources merge and in the in-between is gray, different forms of gray. So what color are shadows? They're black. But why do I see different colored shadows when I'm out in nature? Well, let's go out. I'm going to go to a couple of locations and I'm going to stand there and I'm going to observe not the rule of what color shadows are because shadows don't have a color. I'm going to observe the light. What is happening with the light in those places? It's all about what is the secondary color. You have a primary, a key light, the brightest light, usually the sunlight or usually a lamp or something that is the brightest light source. And then you have your secondary light source. So like if I take this light, my sky and pull it down, you can see this becomes a secondary light source that lets me see into the shadows. And one would assume that these shadows are blue, but they're not. That is a whole new light source. If I turn that light off, one other thing that plays into color temperature is bounced light. So I have some cards over here that I can bounce light off of. I have this big reflector and this reflector is what is used to fill in shadows on set. So I can have no light or I can pick this up near my face and now the light will hit my face. It'll hit this reflector, bounce back onto my face and fill in the shadows. So now I have warm light warm shadows. That's because of the bounce light. I could also diffuse the light. So this is a large diffuser. Light can shine through this. I can use this as a bounce card or I can put it over here in front of the light source. And notice I have pretty sharp shadows right now. I can change the quality of this light by diffusing the light. And what this does is it spreads that light out across my face and it will exaggerate the effect of color temperature and that shift because it's going to spread that light further. It's going to soften these shadows and make the wrap a little bit bigger. It, it increases the size of the terminator angle around my face versus if I have a harsh direct light source. When I'm outdoors, and I'm looking at bounce light. And if I go into a forest or if I stand next to a wall or I stand next to something that is brightly colored, you will see my shadow color will change based on the bounce light and the fill light. So there's the blue of the sky, there's other light sources, and then there's bounce light off of walls and trees and grass and signs and all kinds of different things. So let's go out and try this. Let's look at a couple different places and look at the shadow color. Here I am standing next to a wall that is kind of a gray white wall. So there's a huge amount of bounce light that is coming off of this wall and affecting the shadow side of my face. I have the sunlight over here, shadow over here. Notice how it affects it. The light is kind of in this direction. It's mostly coming here and then there's darkness behind me as I go from light into the shadow. If I move my camera back into the shadows, you can see that I still have that bounce light coming from that wall onto my screen right side of my face. All right, another example, I'm standing right next to this traffic sign and the light is bouncing off the yellow of the sign back onto my face. And you can see it in my shadow color. This becomes another light source when the light bounces off of it back into my face. So when I move just a few feet back from that sign, you can see how the yellow disappears off of my face in the shadowed side because there's no bounce over here anymore. There's just a dark forest and the blue of the sky up that way. I am now standing right next to a big tree. This tree is now bouncing the sunlight off the tree and back onto my face. So if I zoom back in, you can see that this light is now changing the color of light onto my face because the light is bouncing off the tree, getting some of the color of the tree, the warmth of the tree. It's almost making a fill light, a little bit of a bounce light from over here onto my face, which changes the shadow color. I still have the cool of the sky, but I also have the bounce light. Now I'm standing in a forest next to some very bright green, fresh spring colored leaves, and it is bouncing the light off of the green leaves onto my face and filling me with all of this green fill light. 
If I step from the sunlight into the shadow of the trees, I am now being lit by the shadow color. Or actually, I'm only being lit from the blue of the sky and the light that is bouncing from the forest floor, from the sun bouncing in the forest. It gives me a different quality of light. As artists, I think it's really important to abandon the idea that shadow color is a thing, and we have to think about each individual light source. It'll give us more tools, more creativity for creating, crafting the light. Notice in all of these different scenarios that I've showed you that the shape of the light onto my face is different because of where the light sources are. Or can you use bounce light as a rim light to help show the light wrapping across my face? There's so many different ways to utilize soft light that is way more creative than just filling your shadows with a color and calling it a day. So the statement at the beginning, when you have warm light, you have cool shadows, and when you have cool light, you have warm shadows. Is it true? Sometimes, sometimes not. The shadows are not colored. There are always secondary light sources. In this case, I have warm light with even warmer shadows, or I can change this color and I have purple shadows. I have blue shadows, I have green shadows. I have any color shadows I want based off of the light that I put into it. I hope this is helpful. If you have other questions, write them and I will put these questions into future videos. Thanks again for watching, and until next time, keep creating.